John Stuart, Earl of Buchan was a Scottish nobleman and soldier who fought alongside Scotland's French allies during the Hundred Years' War. In 1419 he was sent to France by his father the Duke of Albany, Regent of Scotland, with an army of 6,000 men. Stuart led the combined Franco-Scottish army at the Battle of Barre on 21 March 1421, where he comprehensively defeated the English forces proving that the English could at last be beaten. However, two years later, Stuart was defeated and captured by Thomas Montacute, 4th Earl of Salisbury at the Battle of Cravant in 1423. After the battle he was exchanged, and after his release in 1424 he was appointed Constable of France making him the effective commander-in-chief of the French army. On 17 August 1424 Buchan was killed at the disastrous Battle of Vernoy, along with most of the Scottish troops in France. Early life. Stuart was born c. 1381, the son of Robert Stuart, 1st Duke of Albany and his second wife Muriella Keith. He succeeded to the Earldom of Buchan after the death of his uncle Alexander Stuart, Earl of Buchan, in 1405. In 1406 the Duke of Albany became Regent of Scotland, making him the most powerful man in Scotland, king in all but name. His father, Robert Stuart, Duke of Albany, was grandfather to Euphemia II, Countess of Ross and persuaded her to resign her rights to his son. Stuart appears as Earl of Ross for a time, until his right was challenged by Domnall of Islay, Lord of the Isles, for his wife, who successfully became known as Maria Tud or Mary Leslie, Countess of Ross, family. Stuart married Elizabeth Douglas, daughter of Archibald Douglas, 4th Earl of Douglas. They had just one child, Margaret Stuart, who married George Seaton, 3rd Lord Seaton. Hundred Years War. In 1419 Stuart's father sent him to France with an army of 6,000 men to fight in the Hundred Years War, sailing to La Rochelle in a Spanish fleet. At first Stuart's soldiers proved unpopular amongst the French owing to their fondness for food and drink, but success in battle would make the Scottish army extremely welcome in France. Stuart was commander of the combined Franco-Scottish army at the Battle of Barre on 21 March 1421, where he won a great victory over the English. The first major setback suffered by the English armies during the Hundred Years' War since the reign of Richard II. Buchan had been appointed by the Dolphin to defend Anjou against the Duke of Clarence, brother of King Henry V. Clarence was among the first to fall, wounded by Sir John Swinton and dispatched by Buchan's battle axe. Barre was a huge boost to the morale of the Scottish and French proving that the English were not invincible. On hearing of the Franco-Scottish victory, Pope Martin V remarks that the Scots are well known as an antidote to the English, capture and ransom in the early summer of 1423. At the Battle of Cravant, Buchan found himself in command of a mixed force of French and Scots soldiers. Buchan confronted a combined Anglo-Burgundian army at the village of Cravant in Burgundy, at a bridge and ford on the banks of the River Yon, a left-bank tributary of the Seine, southeast of Auxerre. Buchan's forces outnumbered the English and Burgundians on the opposite bank more than two to one. The combined English and Burgundian forces, numbering some 4,000 men, were led by Thomas Montacute, 4th Earl of Salisbury. For three hours the forces stared each other down, neither willing to attempt an opposed river crossing. Salisbury finally took the initiative and his army began to cross the Waste High River, some 50 metres wide, under a covering hail of arrows from English arches. Meanwhile, another English force under Baron Willoughby de Rursby forced a passage through the Scots across the narrow bridge and divided the Dolphin's army. When the French ranks began to withdraw, the Scots refused to flee and were cut down by the hundreds. Over 3,000 of them fell at the bridgehead or along the river banks, and over 2,000 prisoners were taken, including the Earl of Buchan and the commander of the Dauphin's forces, the Comte de Vendôme. The Dauphin's forces retreated to the Loire, leaving many prisoners behind and over 6,000 dead. 
Buchan may well have considered himself lucky to be taken alive. King Henry V of England had reasserted the English claim of suzerainty over Scotland, and therefore executed Scots prisoners of war on the grounds that they were traitors, fighting against their own king. After the battle Buchan was exchanged, and after his release in 1424 he was appointed constable of France making him the effective commander-in-chief of the French army. To recover from the losses sustained at Cravant, fresh troops under the Earl of Douglas were dispatched from Scotland to France. Battle of Ernoy however, despite these welcome reinforcements, disaster would soon overtake Stuart and his Scottish army. On 17 August 1424 Buchan was killed at the Battle of Ernoy, along with most of the Scottish troops in France. Buchan and his generals unwisely chose to face the English army, led by John of Lancaster, 1st Duke of Bedford in open battle. Bedford's army attacked aggressively from the south to take the Scots in the rear. Abandoned by their French allies and almost completely surrounded, the Scots made a ferocious last stand, but were overwhelmed. Verney was one of the bloodiest battles of the Hundred Years' War, described by the English as a second Agincourt. Altogether some 6,000 Allied troops were killed, including 4,000 Scots. The English lost 1,600 men, an unusually high figure for them, far greater than their losses at Agincourt, indicating the ferocity of the fight. The Earl of Douglas fought on the losing side for the last time, joined in death by Buchan. Legacy Stuart's death had important consequences for domestic politics in Scotland. His death fatally weakened the position of his brother Murdoch Stuart, Duke of Albany who was soon afterwards arrested and executed by James I of Scotland, leading to the almost complete ruin of the Albany Stuarts. A bust of Stuart is displayed to this day in the Galerie des Batailles, in the Chateau de Versailles, opened in 1837.